In five, four, three, two, one. Buenos dias, hippies. Paz in el barrio. Hope your week is progressing in a stately manner. I'll be honest, I didn't watch Brave Sir Barry's annual address on the State of the Union last night. I simply refused to. I have endured ten presidents in my lifetime. And in these things, I have to say, in my observation, nothing changes. There are the usual stale patriotic tropes, the depleted analogies, the exhausted and filled metaphors, and of the sincere exhortations to reclaim our national spirit and do better, all of which have grown to ring hollowly, emptily, out of the speakers as if spoken by some nebulous, rapturous, evanescent orators detached entirely from reality. Justice, they proclaim, but I ask, where is the justice? How can they talk about justice even rhetorically in the United States? It's as extinct as the carrier pigeon. One can say, once again, and if nothing else, Sir Barry does give good speech. His mellifluous voice with his cadences reminiscent of Sunday preaching and his skillful, adroit use of language, those are the fruits of years of careful work and refinement. I remember Joe Biden said he was clean, presentable, and erudite. I think he still is. Now, I gathered my notes for this review from secondary sources. Somebody who watched it so I didn't have to. There were several themes, all of which I think lent themselves to the campaign tenor of the event and the populist tone which this glib epitome of the coordinator class tries to project. I'm going to discuss a couple of them and maybe allude to a couple of others. In the first place there was fairness. Much has been made of the disparity between the tax rates paid by common folks and those paid by their much more fortunate uh, few superiors. Barry made a point by suggesting the top rate for the people with incomes over a million dollars a year should be 30 percent. Sounds downright confiscatory, doesn't it? Mm. However, this is actually a reduction <laughs> since the top marginal tax rate today is, wait for it, already 35 percent. But if he were truly, truly serious about mm, rationalizing the tax structure, he'd have introduced the idea of a financial transactions tax on all securities, that is to say stocks and bonds and money instruments, trading schemes in the amount of two mils on the dollar net value for every transaction over, say, oh, I don't know, let's say $10,000. With such a tax in place, there'd be enough money to fund a national guaranteed health care system cradle to grave for every person in the country. But it makes better politics, I guess, to make the populist appeal to screw the arrogant bastards making a million bucks than to put the system itself to use for the people. Heaven fucking forfend. Then there was competitiveness. Shazama says he wants to create more jobs and improve workers' competitiveness. And I cringe and my tail feathers curl right under whenever I hear that shit. Because let me tell you, that's how you know he's blowing smoke up your butt. The phrase improve competitiveness like increase productivity is nothing but code for the eternal boss's mantra of reducing worker wages and benefits, crippling unions, and then rending ending regulations so that the U.S. labor costs are comparable to those in the rest of the world. So if I read it right, what he means to do is to increase the number of shitty jobs, lower wages and benefits, and turn the company over the country over to the corporates. Hmm. That's novel for a State of the Union address, I must say. In, in what I mm, think was even hubris for a President of the United States, he extolled us as the indispensable country. Stuff like that is why they hate us. Because by making that claim about the U.S., he's directly implying that other nations aren't indispensable, or in fact perhaps disposable or expendable. I gotta think that sets some teeth on edge in other world capitals. And then there's the usual discursive farts about how the wasted trillions of dollars and millions or so of Iraqi dead made us safer. And in the same vein, there was the pipe dream of safe gas shale extraction, a.k.a. fracking, 
Of course, he's the guy who also extolled the virtues of clean coal back in the campaign. So I was less than impressed. And I'm dumbfounded by the euphoria and triumphal zeal that attended that particular space, that, that speech. But folks often take me to task for being negative. So I've got a little list of what I'd try to do if I ran the zoo. I would advocate a guaranteed annual income, enough to sustain a person in dignity whether they can work or not. There will probably never again be enough jobs to keep everybody working, and especially those who need jobs then there would no be no further need for a minimum wage, uh, which makes sense because net jobs are disappearing faster than people are retiring from them, and they won't be replaced. I'd advocate tight, and I mean downright draconian, regulation on industrial and worker safety. I spent some time in the construction business in the old days. Didn't lose any limbs, but it came close. Cavalier doesn't begin to touch the corporate attitudes towards disposable workers. I advocate super stringent environmental legislation and regulation, too. I advocate the corporate death penalty for frequent and repeat violators, and I, advi I advocate imprisonment for officers in those companies which do violate those, those laws and regulations. I declare that I knew all businesses were slyly on the lookout for ways to cut expensive corners or to avoid regulation or to escape taxes or to cheat workers or short clients and customers and escape, their, escape detection, therefore. The larger the business, the greater the chances of mal or misfeasance. So I double the number of attorneys investigating shabby and shoddy business practices. I'd advocate for overturning the Citizens United ruling any way I could, and I'd repeal corporate personhood, too. I also advocate a ban on GMO seeds, and I would advocate for national energy sector, and for uh, a much stronger regulation of the finance industry, including a return to the principles abandoned when Reuben Clinton, Summers, Greenspan, and Graham all got together to murder Glass-Steagall in 99, and for a profits cap, and as I said, for a financial transactions tax, too. Two mils on the dollar doesn't sound too much. So just so as you know, I can think positive thoughts, hippie. <laughs> Tell me what you think when I see you at the beach. <laughs> Pause.